In Fox 5 Health News, the future of treating hand injuries may be found inside a glove. Hmm. And joining us now is Dr. Devin Ampia Parampo from NYU School of Medicine. Good to see you. Okay, so what's the thought about this? So there are a couple of things that are kind of new and put together, like from research in the past. So this idea is that with burns, you have a few different problems that, first of all, if you have a severe hand injury and you put some kind of bandage on it and you take off the bandage later, it can rip off the sure. skin, oh, cause more right. damage. Just okay. like when you put a bandaid on, sure. right, and you try to take it off and it hurts, try to sure. do it quickly. Well, you don't want to cause much more damage. So having a silicone glove, which is what this is made of, actually makes it a lot easier. It doesn't interact and pull off the skin and cause more damage. And also, it's pretty safe in terms of interacting with the body. Now, the other thing is because it's transparent, you can actually see the wound and see how it's healing, right, which actually helps doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, people use a lot of, or doctors rather, use a lot of silicone therapy for scars and burns and things like that. What is it about silicone that really heals well, that? Well, it doesn't cause inflammation, so that's one thing that okay. helps, and it doesn't get into the bloodstream and cause other oh. problems in your body, so it stays pretty separate. Oh. And because it's actually very soft, it molds to your body. So if your body has a different shape, like I myself actually use this for my eye. I got poked in the eye once. Oh, no. uh, I know, but actually it's like a contact lens, so it molds itself around the wound, and then it allows people to kind of look and see what's going on, so you could see if there was any redness or if anything was going, you know, going wrong, and I could actually see through. So with this hand, it's for the doctors to actually see what's going on. Now they're using it for, or the prototype, they're using it for burns, and there's another type of hand that they're also looking at for strokes. So both with burns and with strokes, one of the problems is that people can't move the hand easily, right? Um, you know, especially if it's weak. Now, some of that can be from weakness. Some of that can be from just contractures. So as the hand heals, maybe from the bandages, maybe from the splints or the casting, it gets stuck in a certain position. So with the silicone, because it's so soft, the person can actually move it, and they can use uh, tubes and other things to inject medication into that area and cover wow, the Wow, that is very promising. Yeah, it's very exciting. So we have to see how the trials play out, but I think it's a good thing, a step in the right direction. So I'm interested in, this is really <laughs> odd to me, the next time you take a shower, mm -hmm. you don't go for the soap first, because, <laughs> or skip it, because apparently it can harm your immune system. Please do explain. Just too clean, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's the irony, right? Because we're always taught to get rid of germs and clean bacteria, but you can actually be too clean because we have bacteria on our skin. I mean, we have bacteria in our gut and everywhere that actually help us, right? Mm -hmm. So whether they're helping us to digest food or on our skin, they kill the bacteria that cause acne. We have these different germs that actually assist us. And sometimes they kill yeast and other types of fungus too. So if you kill everything or remove everything, at least in terms of bacteria, Area, you can actually put yourself at risk for other things. So you can cause first really dry skin. It's very abrasive on the skin, which is one problem. And the second thing is if you think about all those cracks, this is what they're talking about with the immune system, all the cracks that you get from dry skin, things can kind of seep through and cause other problems. So right? you're not supposed to use soap at all when you take a shower? Uh, you can, so it's not, it's not the <laughs> worst <laughs> thing. I mean, <laughs> This is revolutionary. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Yeah, okay, so okay. Too, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. just that you don't need to. So soap is most helpful if you're talking about areas that are oily or dirty, like really, uh, if you see dirt, it's better to use soap. I mean, soap doesn't kill bacteria, first of all. What it does is it sort of lifts it off mm -hmm. uh, because it lifts off things that are greasy and oily and right. then kind of pulls it into the water and gets rid of it, right? So it sort of uh, Oh, I thought it burst away. the cell walls. Like, I thought soap was enough to kill bacteria and no. you didn't need the extra chemicals like triclosan and mm. things like that. No, it's not enough wow. to kill it. It just sort of pulls it off and gets rid of it so it goes down the faucet or the drain. All right, right? Well, interesting. Think about like the kind lubricant. of soap you use <laughs> next okay. time. Thank you so much. Oh, we'll be sure, smelling differently next <laughs> yeah. newscast. Yeah. Thanks, doctor. Thanks. Did you know that, Nick? Don't I'm, willing to, I'm willing to take the risk and use the soap. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you're digging ditches, you know, yeah. you probably want to get Or, you know, you've just come from the gym and you've yeah. worked out. Or Thank you. Bad mm, weather, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> that, that'll do it, too. So, uh, well, something new to try, I suppose. Exactly.